So in the last horror game episode, we went ahead and made this little guy right here. And he is a scary monster that will roam among our path right here, finding all the different waypoints and even chasing after the player if he sees them. Now, we need to create some sort of scary jump scare with this rig so that way the player will actually be scared of dying and not just mildly afraid of dying, if that makes sense. We want to make sure the player wants to avoid this monster at all costs. So to start that off, I'm just going to duplicate our horror monster by pressing Control and D, and we're going to move him over a little bit, and we're going to open him up, and we can delete the pathfinding script that's inside of him because we're not going to be using that. After that, we need to grab this guy, drag him over a little bit more, and we need to create a box for him to be inside of. For me, I'm just going to make this box about 15 studs by 1 stud by 15 studs. This will just make a very simple square right here for us to use. And I'm going to make the brick color really black, and the material will be neon. So that way there's pretty much no light reflection on this part. And then we can simply press Control and D to duplicate it raise it up and rotate it around and pretty much just do this for the rest of our box there's one wall so let's duplicate it move it over to the other wall right here and we can simply duplicate these rotate them around i'm going to delete the front wall for now because we don't need that right now i'm going to duplicate this bottom floor raise it up for the roof so i'm going to grab all these different pieces right here holding shift to select every single one of them holding shift to select every single one of them and then we can press control Control and G to group them all as a model. I'm just going to rename this to box and then we can grab our guy right here, our horror monster without the script inside of him and place him right inside of our box. Then let's press and hold shift and click on our box with the horror monster selected and then we can press control and G to group these together as a model and we're going to rename these to the jump scare box. Now let's go into our jump scare box, click on our box and make sure that anchored is set to true so you can click on this anchor button right up here or you can go into individually all the different parts and select anchor and put that equal to true in the property section right here now we can move this box wherever we want to i'm personally gonna move it out here simply so that we don't have to deal with it on our map at all after that let's go ahead and click on the avatar tab right here click on the animation editor and then let's go ahead and click on our rig and we need to create a little jump scare animation so i'm going to click on create right here now for me, I'm just going to have his arms raised up slightly like this, bent at the elbow a little bit. I'm going to do that for both arms, just like this. And then we can simply rotate them outwards a little bit. And this will be our first frame. After that, we can simply just copy and paste this frame by right-clicking, pressing Copy Selected, and paste that over here. And then in the middle, I'm just going to be doing a few adjustments. So right here at this first marker, I'm going to move his head to the left. And then right here, I'm going to move his head to the right. And we can just simply space everything apart so it's nice and equal. We may have to go back and copy the first keyframe right here just to make the loop complete but after that we have ourselves a scary little animation like this you can refine this however you'd like to but i'm just going to be using this for the sake of the tutorial let's click on the three dots right here and click on publish to roblox after that i'm going to change the title of this to jump scare animation and we can click on save right here and then you want to make sure you copy the id by pressing on this button right here and then close this window out after that, we can also close the animation editor by pressing this little X button right here. And then let's go over to starter player right here. Open up starter character scripts, and we're going to add in a local script. This local script, let's rename to jump scare. And side of here, we're going to press the plus icon and add in an animation. This animation, we're going to rename to jump scare animation. And the animation ID, we're going to paste our animation ID from earlier in there. Now inside of our jump scare local script, I'm going to start off with a comment declaring our services up here just to keep our code organized. And we're going to get two different services today. The first one is going to be local players, which will be equal to game get service player service, which if you don't know, it's this player service right here, responsible for holding all of the players inside of our game. After that, I'm going to get another service called tween service, which will be equal to game get service tween service. And if you don't know, tween service is simply a way to animate parts or other instances such as the camera. And that's what we're going to be doing today. 
I'm going to drop down a few lines and let's declare another comment for our variables here. And we're going to start off by saying local player will be equal to players dot local player. Local character will be equal to player dot character or player dot character added colon weight. Now, if you're not sure why we do player dot character or player dot character added weight, that's simply because the player and the player's character are two different objects. The player is what we see inside of the player service. This is responsible for holding all sorts of values, stats, folders typically. It's where the leader stats go, it's where the GUI is held, it's where the backpack and the scripts go, and the character is the player's 3D model or their avatar inside of the game. And so the player will join in first, and this will hold everything such as the name, the display name, the user ID, and most of the camera and GUI controls and everything. But then the character will join in after the player, and that will control things like their walk speed, their jump height, stuff like that. And sometimes the character takes a little longer to load in than it does when we declare this variable. So instead of just returning nil, we're going to wait for that player's character to be added before we declare the character variable. After that, we can say local current camera will be equal to game.workspace.currentCamera. This is the camera that the player will be using when they join the game. And let's get our rig, which will be our horror monster. And this is going to be equal to game.workspace.jumpscarebox. Dot horror monster. Let's drop down a few more lines here and declare a comment for our functions now. And first off, let's just say local animation track will be equal to rig.humanoid.animator colon load animation. This will be our script.jumpscare animation colon play. This is simply going to play the jump scare animation that we made onto our rig inside of that box that we have. After that, let's continue on in our script here. Let's create a local function. And then we're going to call this local function on death because we're going to call this function whenever the player dies. Let's start off by saying current camera dot camera type will be equal to enum dot camera type dot scriptable. This is going to make it so that we can script the camera's behavior. And then we're going to say current camera.cframe will be equal to rig.head.cframe plus, well, let's put some parentheses right here because we're going to be doing some multiplication as well inside of these parentheses. We're going to say rig.head.cframe.look vector. Which, if you don't know what look vector is, it's simply the forward direction of this part, which in this case is the head. So look vector is going to be the forward direction. And we're going to times that by three to simply get three studs ahead of the rig's head. After that, we're going to say current camera dot C frame once again is going to be equal to C frame dot look at. Let's put some parentheses right here. And then we're going to have to put another thing of parentheses. This is going to be a lot of parentheses. So you're going to have to kind of follow along here. I'll try my best to go slow. But inside of these middle parentheses, we're going to say rig dot head dot position plus vector three dot new zero comma one comma zero now let's go out two parentheses right here we're going to say plus we're going to put more parentheses right here we're going to say rig dot head dot c frame dot look vector times three now we're going to go outside of the second parentheses and we're going to say rig dot head dot position so what all these parentheses right here, let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing, is it's going to get the rig's head position. It's going to add one stud upwards to that. So we have kind of a downwards angle looking down on our rig's head. That's going to plus that three studs away from our rig's head right here. And then it's simply going to look at the rig's head's position. After that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in real quick. And we need to create a tween for our camera. So that way it will actually, I guess, add sort of a camera shake effect, you could say. And this is going to be equal to tween service create. This will take our current camera as the instance that we're going to tween. That's going to take our tween info dot new. We're going to say 0 0.1 seconds enum dot easing style dot linear. Whereas I'm going to do linear. You can change this to any other easing style that you want to, whether it be elastic, quad, quart, quint, 
any other one like that. I'm also going to say enum.easingdirection.inout. And then this is going to repeat about 13 times. And then reverses is going to be set to true, which means it's going to play our tween and it's going to play our tween in reverse. And that's going to repeat. After that, let's go ahead. This parenthesis, we're going to say comma, squiggly brackets, C frame is going to be equal to current camera dot C frame plus current camera dot C frame dot look vector times 0 0.5. Now we can go ahead right here, drop down a line and say tween colon play. After that, we're just going to wait three seconds and we're going to change our current camera's camera type back to enum.cameratype.custom, which will return it to what it usually was. Now the average respawn time for your game is about three seconds, so that's why we do task.wait3, and that is perfect. Now after that, all we have to do is say character.humanoid.died colon connect function, not function, or on death function. And we can get rid of those parentheses that it will be passing. And I believe this is all that we need to do. So let's go ahead, click on play, and we can test out our animation. Not our animation, but our jump scare. I think the easiest way for us to die would be to go ahead and mess around with our rig right here. So let's go ahead, get attacked. And you can see our jump scare animation is going to play every single time we die too. So I want to thank each of you guys for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it just as much as I did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.